Well, a lot of the bill is perfectly sensible and I wouldn't have any problem with, but the three clauses that would enable us unilaterally to break international law, I think could be, could be extremely damaging for the UK's reputation. And that's not just my view, it's the view of Michael Howard, for example, the former um, leader of the Conservative Party, and a very staunch Brexiteer, so it's nothing to do with whether, whether you're for or against Brexit. This is just our reputation as the United Kingdom, and by extension of all the British family, if you like, uh, for keeping our word when we give it. Well, your amendment seeks to give Parliament a veto on the government's plan to override the withdrawal agreement via the bill. How much support do you think you have for your amendment? Well, we've got a lot and growing support, and as I say, from people who are on both sides of the Brexit debate, and I think that's really significant. And of course, not only um, uh, is there the House of Commons that the government has to persuade, there's also the House of Lords too, where I know there's even more um, concern. And so what I'm trying to do is to give the government a middle way that says, um, let's hope you can resolve this in the negotiations, which are still going on. That's obviously that's the best solution. If you are really convinced that you have no other option to protect the Good Friday Agreement uh, and peace and uh, stability in Northern Ireland, but to break an international treaty, then you shouldn't wrap that up in, in a bill that deals with a lot of other things as well. There should be a specific vote of the House of Commons on that, purely so we debate that issue can be done in one day, so it can be done swiftly, but it has to be done specifically about that because it's such a grave thing to do. And then everybody would know the consequences of what we're doing, but also what justification the government does or doesn't have for it. Well, this bill is seen as a safety net by the government should there be no Brexit deal so as to protect the integrity of the single market, which of course includes Northern Ireland, currently yeah. subject to EU customs rules under the withdrawal agreement. Does your amendment prevent the government from plugging that hole? No, what it does is it says that they would have to, if those negotiations failed, suppose that they're not able to get anywhere, then they would have to come back to Parliament and get specific authorisation to use those powers which are in the bill. So they would be there uh, as a fail safe, uh, but they wouldn't be able to use them until Parliament gave them a specific go ahead. Do you think a no deal is now very likely, given the level of mistrust between the EU and the UK? Well, it certainly hasn't helped, because you know, the negotiations were pretty tense anyway. Um, and it's, I, I think it's absolutely imperative that we do get a deal. It's important for, for Ireland, it's important for the UK. Heaven knows it's important for Gibraltar. Uh, and uh, uh, that's one of the things that we're anxious to, to, to press on the government, is that you've got to look at the whole of the British family in what we're doing with this. Um, I, th I think it has been an unwise thing to have done. If it was intended as a negotiating tactic to try and up the ante, um, I'm not sure it's working. Well, some people are questioning whether the UK government actually wants a Brexit deal. Does Boris Johnson want a deal? Boris always says that he does. He said it repeatedly. He said it in the House of Commons Wednesday. I, I, on Wednesday. I'm prepared to take him at his word on that. I think there are some people in the House of Commons, some people in my party, who don't want a deal. And they've been quite open about that. Um, uh, that's the, the really hard line Brexit is, if you like. Um, but that's not the policy of the government. That's not the policy of the Conservative Party. Um, so I just want Boris to, to stick to what is his policy, which is to get a deal, um, but not to do anything which jeopardises our reputation, and our you know, very strong reputation for being you know, one of the countries which created the rule of law. You, you can't trade that away lightly. So, Bob, you've been a loyal party member and MP for many years. Have you considered what the consequences are of tabling this amendment for you personally? Could you lose the party whip? That's not something that will be in my gift. That will be up to the party managers. But um, uh, you don't do something in public life um, without thinking through the consequences. Um, uh, the conversations I've had with ministers have been perfectly friendly and civilised. Um, we're not at daggers drawn in any way. I hope that we'll continue talking. And I'm trying to give them, as I say, um, a way not to sabotage their bill, uh, but just to put on ice the most controversial and dangerous part of it. So that it's only used if they can come along and make a specific case to us. So I'm not undermining the government's overall policy, but I'm saying you've got to carry out that policy in accordance with the law. And that is a, a fundamental and that's something I'm determined to stick by.